warm welcome and wish you all a happy learning. We are going to discuss now the price elasticity of demand and the various approaches to pricing. What is elasticity? To put it in simple parlance, elasticity is nothing but a rubber band. How much you can stretch? How much is it adaptable? How much is it adjustable or how much it is flexible? What are we talking here? We are talking about how flexible, how adaptable, how adjustable is the price to the demand. Because pricing is such an essential component of getting your product to the consumer, creating a demand for the product. We are also going to touch base on some of the approaches to pricing. Let's first focus on price elasticity of demand. So our focus is going to be on price elasticity and then we will look at various approaches such as demand based approach, full cost plus pricing, marginal cost plus pricing, opportunity cost approach and fixed price tenders. Let's begin with price elasticity. Don't get concerned with the formula, we'll come to that. What is price elasticity? As I said, it is a flexibility, adaptability. On what? Look at this definition. The price elasticity measures the extent of change in demand for a product following a change to its price. Therefore, what is the impact on the demand when there is a change to the price? That is what is explained by this formula percentage change in sales demand to percentage change in sales price and this is how we notate it price elasticity of demand which is also called as elasticity of demand is nothing but percentage change in quantity divided by percentage change in the price and which has got a formula please remember this formula because it is easy to compute let's take an example so that it becomes much more clearer. For example, here is a situation where we are asked to find out price elasticity between point A and point B. So here is a diagram which has on the x axis the quantity and on the y axis the price. So when the price is $20, we are able to buy 14 units of a product and that's what we call as point A. But look at a situation of change in price and what it does to demand. When the price actually goes to 26, what has happened to the quantity? The quantity has come down from 14 to 10, which means a change in the price, that is an increase in the price has led to a reduction in the demand. Therefore, you have got point A and point B and now we need to find the price elasticity between point A and point B. We saw this beautiful equation in the previous slide. So, let us use that equation. Therefore, elasticity of demand is the percentage change in quantity divided by percentage change in price. What is the change in quantity? It used to be 14, it came down to 10. What is the change in the price? It was 20, it went up to 26. So those are the formula numbers that we are using to find out elasticity of demand. And whenever elasticity of demand is computed, we always look at the absolute value. What I mean by absolute value? We ignore the negative sign. Therefore, though you may get a negative sign there, we are putting an absolute value. Therefore, the elasticity comes to 1.27. Let us just stay with this number, 1.27. We are going to watch a video and then we are going to relate to this 1.27 a bit later. Let us now watch a video. Hi Mrs. Tan, came back from Kampong Aaron Market. Hi Mr. Lee, yes I did. I must complain to you about how expensive everything is. This morning I wanted to make papaya milkshake using 10 papayas. But just now at the market the price of each papayas is now $2 instead of the usual $1.50 so, 
Instead of buying my usual 10, I bought only 5. So my milkshake tasted more milk than papaya. Wow Mrs. Tan, your price elasticity of demand for papaya is so price elastic. You responded to a 33% rise in the price of papayas from $150 to $2, by reducing quantity demanded of papayas by 50%, from 10 to 5. That's so like, more than proportionate. Yes Mr. Lee, you are right. I wonder why is my price elasticity of demand for papaya so price elastic? Okay, now this video tells us that when there was a 50% change in the demand because of a 33.33% rise in the price, the equation that we had was 50% divided by 33.33%. Therefore, the number in simple terms should be above 1. Let's just stay with this concept of above 1. In the previous example, we saw 1.27, which is again above 1. Now, what does above 1 represent in price elasticity? Let's understand that. Whenever the percentage change in quantity is greater than the percentage change in price, we say that the demand is elastic. Let's remember the two examples. In the first example, we had 1.27 above 1. Therefore, we say that the demand is elastic. In the second example, we had 50% divided by 33.33%, which is again above 1. Therefore, demand is elastic. Therefore, whenever the percentage change in quantity divided by the percentage change in price is above 1, the demand is elastic. What happens if it is not the case? That is what we understand from the second part. If the percentage change in quantity is less than the percentage change in price, we say that the demand is inelastic. So now we have understood two concepts. When is demand elastic? When is demand inelastic? Let's understand a bit more further. How is this elasticity linked to pricing decision? So, in the case of inelastic demand, what is inelastic demand? We just said that whenever the percentage change in quantity divided by percentage change in price is less than 1, it is inelastic demand, which means whenever there is an inelastic demand, an increase in price will also increase the revenues. Surprising, right? But that is called inelastic demand. Even if the price goes up, there is still a demand. Therefore, your revenue goes up. Look at the normal classic case called elastic demand. In elastic demand, an increase in price will bring decrease in revenue, decrease in demand. This is what we saw actually in both those examples. When the price went up, the demand came down and that's called elastic demand.